Um, the process by which Walleyes for Tomorrow runs a portable fish hatchery has been a, a, um, been a conversation lately. Uh, what we do, what we have done for many years is we manufacture a portable fish hatchery here at the office. Um, it's an enclosed trailer, uh, has a countertop and, and, and it has a water distribution manifold and a tank, an elevated tank. And from, we pump that elevated tank full of water and run water into incubation jars in the hatchery. Uh, we, with permission from the DNR, we need a collection and reintroduction permit to do this process from the DNR. And we also need a siting permit from the Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection to run a hatchery. But once we decide where to ha have a hatchery, um, we need about six individuals that are dedicated to man one of our portable hatcheries for approximately 40 days. Uh, from the time we set the first nets until we turn the, the last of the hatched uh, fry uh, loose in the water, this whole process takes around 40 days. And the way it works is we, we put bike nets in the water and catch the walleyes. We strip the eggs from the females. Uh, we strip the milk from the, the males and mix, the, mix them together to fertilize the eggs. And then we put these eggs into the incubation jars. Uh, an incubation jar is, a, is a, a acrylic cylinder, eight inches in diameter and about 18 inches tall. It has an overflow spout up on the top of it. And we will put about 300,000 eggs in each one of these. We can cheat a little bit so that we, we try to get about 4 million eggs in each hatchery. And then we run water through this, uh, and we have to have water continually flowing through the, through the incubation cylinders to keep the eggs oxygenated. They breathe just like we do. So we have to have fresh water flowing through the cylinder, and the water comes in a center distribution tube down the middle and then wells back up and then flows out the top. Uh, we run about a gallon and a half a minute through each one of these um, incubation jars and then there's a horizontal trough that collects this water and takes it outside. Um, this horizontal trough also collects the fry as they hatch from the eggs as the, as the Actually, they're larvae. They're not even a fully formed little fish. Uh, they have a yolk sac attached to their abdomen. And when they hatch, they, they, they're washed up uh, from the egg mass that's down in the bottom or lower portion of the incubation cylinder and washed out into this collection trough. And outside, we typically have um, six 90-gallon tanks in a row on stands. And we have a a distribution manifold that has a number of valves so that we can control how many uh, that we're collecting in each individual tank at any given particular time. But then we, it, when they, we put them in these tanks, we hold them for maybe 24 to 48 hours, depending upon water temperature, and we watch them. Um, initially, they, they, they aren't very energetic swimmers. They're called swim up fry. Uh, you can take a little white plastic uh, bowl and, and dip some in the bowl and, and initially they'll be uh, pretty inert. They're laying there while they're, they're absorbing their yolk sac. But after their yolk sac is pretty much gone, they're, they're zipping around in the bowl. And when they're doing that, it's time to turn them loose. And what we do then is we drain the water down in our, in our holding tanks or capture tanks. And we siphon the, the little guys into a cooler, a large cooler. Uh, and put that in a boat and take it out and we put a siphon hose in the cooler and lay it over the side of the boat with a, a pool slinky, one of these colored uh, sleeves so that as the, they're being siphoned out of the tank, they're being siphoned horizontally and we just drift across the lake and, and release them. Um, the, as soon as their yolk sac is gone, they need to find some source of nutrients and that nutrient those nutrients are usually zooplankton. Um, probably six or seven different species of zooplankton are the primary food source uh, for walleyes and they're native to the lakes in the state, native to almost all lakes. Uh, but we use a, what's called a plankton tow, 
prior to this process, we go around the lake and pull the plankton toe to see just where in a given lake um, the plankton are most prolific. Uh, not every part of a lake has a good zooplankton plankton population. So what we try to do is locate uh, a congregation of zooplankton so that when we turn these little guys loose, their first meal is readily available. After that, um, they live in the top 18 inches of water, you know, give or take a little bit, uh, for about three to maybe four weeks. Um, and then after they're about an inch and a half long, they, go, they, they cease to be what's called planktivorous, or eating plankton, to pisciivorous, which they, pisci or fish. And they want to, um, they need more protein is what it boils down to. They have to have a, a, a better uh, food value source than the zooplankton can, survive, can provide. So then they spread out across the lake and become as much a predator when they're an inch and a half to two inches long as they are when they're 24 inches long. Uh, they prey on other fish species and themselves actually. So that's pretty much how the system works. Um, it's intense to a degree because you have to do it right. It's a lot easier to kill these little fish than it is to keep them alive. So we have to pay attention to the detail, but it's, it sure is satisfying to be able to turn loose three or, or four million little fish um, that you've um, been able to, you know, babysit for a number of days to make this happen.